tonight, Fortress WA will not fall. Fears the hard border to Queensland will stay shut for four weeks, leaving Perth families stranded despite an end to a three-day lockdown. Plus, play brought to a halt as cricket fans are marched out of the SCG amid a racism storm. A $400 helping hand for Perth seniors. The election pitch aimed at WA's most vulnerable to help them feel safe in their own homes. Not a single survivor. The search for answers tonight as an Indonesian passenger plane crashes into the sea. And legendary yachtsman John Sanders drops anchor in Albany, sailing home after his 11th voyage around the globe. This is Nine News Perth with Michael Genovese. Good evening. WA's hard border with Queensland could be sealed shut for 28 days, despite the state recording no cases of community spread of COVID-19. Frustrated families have been left in limbo as Brisbane prepares to lift its lockdown tomorrow night. Kelly Stacey and her family were in the middle of moving to WA when they got stuck in Brisbane's lockdown. I'm not sleeping at all. I'm, I'm barely getting an hour or two of sleep every night because I'm so emotional about the whole thing. Packing up their home in New South Wales to avoid WA's hard border, the family now has less than a week until they're homeless, unable to get answers from the COVID hotline, despite owning a Perth property, having kids enrolled in school here and bringing her skills as a registered nurse. We're not idiots, so we don't just sit around um, and not have plans in place, you know, but for basically the, the gate to close so quickly in WA just throws everything into chaos. On day two of Brisbane's lockdown, Queensland recorded another day of zero COVID cases. That's despite fears a hotel quarantine cleaner leaked the highly contagious UK strain of the virus. 147 close contacts are all in quarantine, with 122 tests negative so far very relieved. Um, I think uh, all of us were very anxious. Brisbane's lockdown is expected to end at six o'clock tomorrow night but WA is likely to keep Queenslanders locked out for some time yet. You think a state has it under control and it turns out they don't. Generally what we've done is allow for a buffer period after they get to zero cases. It's normally 28 days. Recent arrivals from Queensland will still have to carry out their 14 days of isolation here in Perth, even if Brisbane lifts its lockdown tomorrow night off the back of no community spread. The only state to record community transmission today was New South Wales. Three cases linked to its western suburbs cluster as the northern beaches hotspot emerges from lockdown. I just ask uh, other state leaders to please talk to us before they close their border to New South Wales and uh, give us a chance to demonstrate our capacity to get on top of the virus. The New South Wales government needs to be respectful of what other states do to protect ourselves. People lining up for tests at Joondalup COVID clinic far from protected, hardly a mask in sight, as West Aussies like Dawn Kay are stuck in Queensland, her exemption request denied. Within our own country, I just didn't think that we would be denied access to just get back home. WA's hard border leaving behind a state of limbo. Jacqueline Robson, Nine News. A 37-year-old man has been charged over a quarantine breach off the WA coast. Police say the international crew member jumped off a ship in Albany and swam to shore. Michael Stamp, it sparked an urgent hunt over exposure fears. Michael, police issued an emergency alert for the Vietnamese man who went missing off a bulk carrier ship docked at the port of Albany yesterday morning. It's alleged the 37-year-old man jumped off the vessel and swam to shore. He was arrested around 7 o'clock last night at a backpackers and underwent a rapid test for coronavirus, which returned a negative result. Right now, crew members are not permitted on land under strict COVID-19 rules. The man has since been charged with failing to comply with the direction and will face court again in the morning. Michael. Michael Stamp, thank you. We've got details now on a freak barbecue accident north of Perth. A 26-year-old man has suffered serious burns after a gas bottle exploded. Olivia Donaldson, he wants people to see his injuries as an important warning. Michael, the 26-year-old is urging West Australians to take care when barbecuing. This is what happened to him last night. He was barbecuing for his wife around 7pm on their property in Bindoon and when he went to turn off the gas bottle, it exploded. Now, luckily, neighbours witnessed the accident and they had firefighting units, so they managed to extinguish the flames. Now, he is in a stable condition now at Fiona Stanley Hospital and has undergone treatment for burns to his face and to his 
chest and he is expected to be released tomorrow. Michael. Olivia Donaldson, thanks for the update. The McGowan government has promised a $400 bonus to seniors to beef up their security if re-elected in March. The Premier is fed up with crime after a spate of violent and even deadly attacks on Perth's most vulnerable. They're the savage attacks on innocent seniors that shocked Perth. Great-grandfather Emiliano Lombardi, the deadliest, the 84-year-old killed after allegedly being bashed inside his East Cannington home. And just this week, a 90-year-old husband and wife victims of a brutal crime in South Lake. We've seen some terrible examples uh, of people uh, bashing and treating seniors badly. And we want to make sure we do everything we can to prevent that from occurring in the future. The Premier believes a senior's safety and security rebate will help to better protect the elderly community. In a $16 million promise announced today, seniors will be eligible for a rebate of up to $400 for home security equipment under a re-elected McGowan government. 77-year-old Iris Jones plans to use the money to install security screens after being robbed five years ago. I lock all the doors and I lock all the windows because I don't feel secure. The last time we were robbed, it was in, in broad daylight. The state opposition says the Premier should issue the security rebate now and not wait for the election. Three teenagers have now been charged over the early morning attack last week in our southern suburbs. Five days since the great-grandparents were attacked in what police describe as disgusting, the 90-year-old woman has been released from hospital and returned home. But her partner remains in Fiona Stanley Hospital in a stable condition, still recovering from a deep cut to his face. If you can't be safe in your own home, where can you be safe? Michael Stamp, Nine News. The Sydney cricket test has been dragged into a second day of drama with Indian players making allegations of racial abuse. The game was halted as police swarmed the stands and singled out a group of fans, officials reaffirming zero tolerance for discriminatory behaviour. In the heat of battle, with a game on the line, plays brought to a sudden stop. The Indian side rallies around bowler Mohammed Siraj as he again complains of alleged racial abuse. It's clearly cut to the nerve of this Indian team, and rightfully so. Soon security and police are circling, questioning who heard and said what. And if there's been abuse directed towards the players, just kick them out straight away. Not welcome ever. Up to nine young men were removed from the ground by police. It's the second drama in as many days in the gentleman's game. At the close of play yesterday, Siraj and teammate Jasper Boomer complained to umpires about a group of drunk Aussie fans reportedly swearing and calling them monkeys. The tourists were hoping for a clean slate as they departed for day four of the Sydney test, masking their feelings about the disgraceful behaviour. How do you feel about what was said on the field to you? Their coach, eager to move on. What's yesterday is yesterday. Today is a new day glorious. That glory, sadly short-lived. Cricket Australia forced to apologise to one of our fiercest rivals. Supporters from both sides left embarrassed. We should appreciate that they came here for us, so we watched them play. Especially because it's a game of respect. Um, they call it the gentleman's game for a reason. And it doesn't matter what colour skin your skin is, it's just, it's, it's just appalling. An official complaint has been made to the International Cricket Council, but late this afternoon, today's incident was put down to a misunderstanding with the group of men let go. Tiffany Genders, Nine News. Indonesian officials believe they've found the wreckage of a passenger plane that crashed into the sea just minutes after taking off. 62 people, including many children, were on board when it disappeared from radar. Faces burdened by the unknown, holding on to hope, fearing the worst. Relatives gathered in Pontianak in West Kalimantan, waiting for a flight from Jakarta that never arrived. On board, 62 Indonesian passengers and crew, including seven children and three babies. Sriwijaya Air Flight 182 sat on the tarmac for 30 minutes due to heavy rain before taking off just after 2.30pm local time. 
Flight radar shows it tracking to the northwest for its 90-minute flight to Pontianak, not its expected path. Within four minutes, it climbed to more than 3,300 metres, but then plunged 3,000 metres in a minute before disappearing. A transport ministry spokesperson said air traffic control had questioned the aircraft's unexpected direction. Seconds later, it disappeared. Search and rescue teams and five Navy ships were mobilised, quickly pinpointing the crash site and, after detecting an emergency signal from the aircraft, found larger pieces of wreckage this afternoon. The 737-500 was almost 27 years old, built well before Boeing's newer troubled 737 MAX model, one of which crashed off Jakarta in 2018, killing all 189 people on board the Lion Air flight. Boeing says it's closely monitoring this latest crash. Sriwijaya Air flies largely within Indonesia and has a solid safety record. Its chief executive said the plane was in good condition when it made the journey from Pontianak to Jakarta and had a good maintenance record. He added, we are deeply sorry for what has happened. Eddie Meyer, Nine News. A mother and her three young daughters have died in an explosive house fire in Melbourne. A man who was also at the home is tonight under police guard in hospital. Three sisters and a mum who loved them desperately. They died together in the early hours of this morning. It's very tragic and uh, it appears that they've all been huddled together. The fire started in the cluttered garage of the Glen Waverley home where loved ones gathered today to pay tribute to Karadu Kikachi and her daughters. The garage was full of rubbish and um, oils and um, uh, chemicals. That is what likely sparked a huge blast that woke neighbours. Oh my God, really upset. It's just horrific, horrific. It's just, it wasn't even like a, a fire. It was more like a, it was like a war zone out here. There was someone else at the home, a man known to the family. He was going, help, help, help. And then that's when a lot of the neighbours started coming out of their houses to see what was happening and what they could do. He was seriously hurt and taken to hospital. He is uh, currently incubated and unable to assist us with our inquiries. With the front of the house blocked by fire, this would have been the family's only chance of escape, a three-storey drop from an upper floor window. The girls were aged three, five and seven. It was just so, so, so sad. So heard, sad. When, when we heard about it and um, we're just really upset. Really upset. The sisters' clothes still out on the line, stickers on their bedroom window. Their happy faces a common sight in Tulloch Grove. Um, the girls were beautiful. The hair was always done. Uh, I remember them with a big smile on their faces every day. The two older ones will be riding, riding the bikes and the little one will be in the scooter, happily going all the way and going around and around and around. Tonight, the tragedy is being felt by all. We keep a close eye on our officers and uh, we'll employ welfare services to, um, to speak to them as well at the, end of the, at the end of today. But as the community grieves, investigators are working to determine if this fire was a tragic accident or something more sinister. Reid Butler, Nine News. Firefighters fear an arsonist may have deliberately lit a blaze in the Shire of Chittering this morning. A bushfire watch and act is right now in place for residents in Lower Chittering and Bullsbrook who have been told to leave their homes if not prepared to actively defend. Helicopters water bombed the blaze from the air this afternoon. A 38-year-old man is fighting for life in Royal Perth Hospital tonight after losing control of his dirt bike north of Perth. The rider wasn't wearing a helmet when he drifted across Sydney Road in Nangara, hitting the kerb and colliding with a power pole. Paramedics rushed to the scene at a quarter past seven near the intersection of Fortitude Boulevard. He was taken to hospital where he is now in a critical condition. Well, social media may have silenced the President of the United States, but his son has been vocal on his behalf. Donald Trump Jr. today claiming the country is losing free speech as more of those involved in the Capitol Hill riot were arrested. 
Hang Mike Pence. New video captures chilling death threats against the vice president amid the ugly violence and looting at the nation's capital. And now some are paying for it. Lectern thief Adam Johnson arrested and charged. Jacob Chansley, who stormed the building in horns, a headdress and armed with a spear, also now in custody. And as his supporters lose their freedom, Donald Trump is adapting to a different life himself one without Twitter. A senior administration official reportedly saying he went ballistic. It's a sad day uh, when you're literally talking about losing free speech. It's a sad day when big tech has more power than big government, that they can censor the president of the United States. Donald Trump Jr. hit back in a Facebook video. This is a monopoly on thought. This is a monopoly on free speech that these companies have. But others are pleased. Whoopi Goldberg tweeting, finally, Sasha Baron Cohen, we did it. And Julia Louis-Dreyfus, what the f took you so long? Many of the president's supporters have turned to an alternative platform, Parler, which is now on notice for failing to monitor content inciting violence. One post reads, many of us will return on January 19 carrying our weapons in support of our nation's resolve, to which the world will never forget. We will come in numbers that no standing army or police agency can match. I know Apple did it yesterday. They threatened Parler, uh, another social media app that seems to be pro Free speech, amazing. It's amazing. They're saying that the president's tweets have incited violence. Do you agree? No, absolutely not. What incited violence is the hyperpartisanship in this nation. What's incited violence is the mainstream media portraying people like myself to something that we're not. As preparations ramp up on the National Mall for Inauguration Day, President-elect Joe Biden went to church, laying low, but for a few thoughts he could post online. Our president is not above the law. Justice serves the people. It doesn't protect the powerful. Even if House Democrats do introduce an article of impeachment early next week, it's likely trial proceedings wouldn't get underway until the day before Joe Biden's inauguration, when the Senate resumes business on January 19. He'll be the only president in the history of the United States of America to be impeached two times. He can no longer pardon people for anything related to this insurrection if he becomes impeached. That's the most practical, real impact of him being impeached. As all corners of the world grapple with what's unfolded. I was astonished, the Pope said, because they are people so disciplined in democracy. In Washington, D.C., Alexis Daesh, Nine News. WA sailor John Sanders has finally made it home, completing his 11th circumnavigation of the world. The 81-year-old is waiting on a police clearance in Albany before he can come ashore, despite spending 17 days alone at sea on his yacht. His trip took about three months longer than predicted after being forced into lockdown in the Caribbean. The yachtsman left WA just before the pandemic hit on a plastic waste research mission. Sherry Lee Biggs is here with all your weather details. Sherry, a humid day across our suburbs. Well, it was a bit of a welcome change from a long week of hot, dry weather, Michael. It's because that West Coast trough has finally tracked inland today. So what we're getting is more of these onshore winds, much cooler and a bit of added moisture to the air. Now it meant our coastal suburbs were much cooler than those further inland. It was warmest at the usual hotspot, Bullsbrook at just over 29 degrees and the coolest, Hillary's at just over 23. Now you might sleep a little better tonight as well, Michael. It's uh, looking much cooler than what we've experienced lately, but it won't last long. It's heating up again very soon. So I'll have the details coming up. Looking forward to that. Sherry Lee Biggs, talk to you soon. Next, tributes to a Perth father who lost his life in a fishing tragedy. Three days left of the abalone season. The warning authorities want you to hear. An AFL star under investigation over a sexting scandal. A vaccine fit for a queen. Her Majesty and Prince Philip roll up their sleeves for the COVID-19 jab. And how to make the great Australian dream a reality earlier than expected. Family and friends of a Perth man who died while fishing for abalone say the father of three will be greatly missed. Authorities are urging fishers to be vigilant with seven lives lost while trawling for the delicacy in the past eight years. It's dangerous and can be deadly, but that doesn't stop thousands of people hitting our beaches and risking their lives for a taste of abalone. 
yesterday proved just how lethal abalone fishing can be with two deaths on just the second day of the season. It's very sad. These cases are very sad. They seem to happen every year. Perth, father of three, Sunye Yap, was one of two men who lost their lives just after 7am. He'd been fishing with relatives off North Beach when surf lifesavers pulled him from the water. Loved ones could do nothing but watch from the shore as he was rushed to nearby paramedics. It shows just how dangerous abalone fishing is here in Western Australia. His wife asking for help online for people to pray for her husband who couldn't be saved. Sunyi Yap loved his family. His passion for gardening, fishing and cooking made clear online. Last month, posting this photograph of his wetsuit saying, gear for abalone, season starting in a week. This was his catch on day one. Rose abalone straight from the sea. He leaves behind his wife, two daughters and son. A man in his 70s also died after searching for the delicacy off Hillary's. It's understood he suffered a heart attack while in the water. Make sure you're properly prepared, you have the right equipment, um, you're fit uh, and you have people keeping an eye on you. There are three days left this season. Kelly Williams, Nine News. A 37-year-old has been taken to hospital after he lost control of his car and hit a roadside drain in Hilbert in Perth's southeast this morning. His Nissan hatchback crashed at the intersection of Rowley and Hopkinson Road at about 6.30. He was taken to Fiona Stanley Hospital in an ambulance, but his injuries were not life-threatening. Well, federal Parliament will soon vote on a controversial plan to make it easier to get a loan or credit. The government says it will boost small businesses in the housing industry, but critics fear it will expose more Australians to debt. Some emergencies happen quietly, as Jasmine Optum knows all too well. Hello, this is Jasmine from the Financial Abuse Service. It's a pervasive, insidious problem. As a caseworker for financial abuse victims, she's seen and heard some terrible things. We helped a client whose partner had coerced her to take out a car loan for his benefit uh, because of his poor credit rating. And her partner took the car and left her with the $50,000 debt. And is deeply concerned about the federal government's plans to make it easier for people to get credit. She's not alone. They are winding back protections that have played an important role in supporting victims of domestic violence and protecting them. In a submission to Treasury, legal experts and consumer advocates have described it as the most short-sighted, poorly thought-out policy proposed by a government in credit or financial services in recent memory. Under the current law, a lender is required to check whether a loan is suitable for an applicant. That provides an important opportunity to really assess whether or not the person who's making the application really wants it or is being coerced. But the government wants to shift the onus onto the borrower to provide accurate information about their financial position, allowing banks and other lenders to rely on what they're being told. It insists there will still be protections in place, claiming lenders would need to make reasonable inquiries to confirm a person won't go into severe hardship. We think these absolutely walk that fine line between protecting those vulnerable consumers, but also ensuring that everyday Australians can get the credit they need. The government claims the new laws would boost the economy by removing some of the red tape around borrowing, making it easier for home buyers or business owners to get a loan. These measures are not here to help lenders. These measures are here to help everyday Australians. But there are grave fears they won't help those who need it the most. We'll see more people experiencing financial abuse with bigger debts and more complex legal problems. Fiona Willen, Nine News. AFL star Jonathan Patton is under investigation after allegedly sending sexually offensive images to a woman. Nine News can reveal at least two others have filed a complaint against the Hawthorne player. Jonathan Patton joined the Hawks in 2020 after seven years with Greater Western Sydney. Shapes it, works it through. Plagued by injuries, the 27-year-old former number one draft pick has deleted his social media accounts. Amid allegations, he sent lewd images to a woman. Nine News can reveal at least two other women claim they also received unsolicited images from Patton, going back to at least 2017. Basically, from the get-go, he just talked to me in such a sexual nature that I never reciprocated. He would send me photos of him in bed like exposed. Coonan says the alleged behaviour was going too far. I was making it really clear that I didn't want that from him. The Hawthorne Football Club said the allegations relating to one woman are of behaviour that does not reflect the values and standards of the club. 
And as soon as the club became aware of the allegations, it told Patton that this behaviour would not be tolerated. Media specialist Dr Belinda Barnett says regardless of whether the allegations against Patton are true or not, it's important to educate players on responsible social media use. But also more deeply how to have respect in their daily interactions because that will influence how they behave on social media as well. The club has referred Patton's matter to Hawthorne's Integrity Committee, which can issue fines or match bans. Alexandra Nelson, Nine News. The Queen and Prince Philip have received their first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. The palace revealing the jab was administered by a household doctor at Windsor Castle. The royal inoculation comes as the UK's coronavirus death toll surpassed 80,000. Next, achieving the great Australian dream while avoiding rising house prices. Our buyers are getting a foot onto the property ladder. The COVID death toll rises in LA, one person now dying every eight minutes. The Aussie woman defying the odds after a shattering health diagnosis. And later, why this ex-con is sifting through your rubbish and cashing in. First home buyers are being encouraged to look beyond the city to get their foot into the property market. And while new government schemes are making the process easier, the advice for younger people is to start small. At just 25 years old, Liz Tung has achieved the great Australian dream. Through uni, I always kind of had part time jobs working in retail, so definitely saving up while I was still at uni. There's been a surge in first home buyers, up 41% on last year. Up the COVID saw investors, by and large, bow out. Investors really took a step back in 2020. You had no migration. You had uh, Airbnb properties going belly up. You had rents dropping. There were a lot of price pressures for investors over the course of that year. Liz settled on a block on the outskirts of Melbourne and built. She now has tenants paying off the mortgage while she continues to live and work in Sydney. And don't be deterred by the prices that you see on the market. Like, for example, obviously it's a little bit intimidating to buy in Sydney, but there are other options out there, you know, in different states. Government grants and record low interest rates have also given first home buyers a leg up into the market. But still, the number one way to get a footing on the property ladder is the bank of mum and dad. Uh, they can chip in with a cash gift to help you with uh, your deposit, but also they can opt to go guarantor on your home loan. And what that means that is if you don't have a 20% deposit, you may still be able to avoid costly lenders' mortgage insurance. Mum and dad definitely helped me out a little bit. Uh, I definitely wanted to do a lot of it myself. Of course, not everyone has the luxury of a mum and dad bank. For those going it alone, there is a scheme where the government acts as guarantor tour and you only need a 5% deposit. But as always, there's a catch. If you're buying a $600,000 home, you'll only need to save up a $30,000 deposit instead of a $120,000 deposit. But monthly repayments will be $365 higher as a result of having a larger loan and you'll pay $41,000 extra in interest over 30 years. For those looking to buy in 2021, the advice is don't wait for your dream home, start small, even if that's an investment property, interstate. And always make sure you've got a decent buffer in your finances to weather any storm. Roofs can break, pipes can leak, all of these things can cost money. Sophie Walsh, Nine News. The state opposition has pledged more than $80 million to support cycling participation in its latest election pitch. WA has the highest cycling per capita in the nation, with 400,000 West Australians riding a bike each week. The funding boost would see upgrades on shared paths and cycling tourism. Cycling tourists spend nearly five times as much as regular tourists. So we want to make sure, as the Liberal Party, as part of our plan to help create 200 thousand new jobs here in WA over the coming five years. In the past year, an extra 77,000 people have taken up riding a bike. More than 22 million Americans have been infected with COVID-19. It comes after a record day of new cases, almost 290,000 infections reported on Friday. 
The situation in Los Angeles continues to spiral with someone dying from the virus every eight minutes. The woman you're about to meet can't walk, but she can abseil, climb and trek in conditions most would consider treacherous. Brie Manley takes her adventures seriously and her love of life makes it easy to see why she's often called an inspiration. Crawling through thick mud, <laughs> hiking rough terrain and dangling from cliffs. <laughs> Extreme sports certainly require determination and grit. This is Brie Manley. With more courage than fear, there isn't a challenge she turns down. There's always going to be something on your goal list or your bucket list. But there's a twist. Brie was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when she was just 19. My whole world's been flipped upside down. It was a bit of a punch in the gut. MS is a chronic illness that affects the central nervous system. It means Brie's body may eventually stop functioning. But... She's resilient. This is the muddiest I've ever been. And if there's a will, Bree is proving there's a way. If I lose my right leg, then I'll just use my left one. If I lose my arm, I'll just use the other one and my leg. Bree doesn't always have good days. She admits she sometimes thinks about what life would be like without a disability. You have a good cry, let it all go, let it all out, and then you pick yourself up and What's next? But there's plenty more Brie wants to tick off the list. She has plans to surf a tube, go canyoning and to climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And after meeting Brie, there's little doubt she'll achieve those goals. By her side, her family. I've seen some of what she go through, goes through to in these abseiling and, and even out in the surf. It's pretty hard for her and she's just so determined and, and it's what inspires me. I've still got some pretty crazy stuff to do yet. Uh, I'm not finished and I probably won't ever be finished. Maggie Rayworth, Nine News. Pocket pain for Perth families. Why the cost of childcare is about to rise. That's ahead. Plus, he's the king of cans, turning recycling into big bucks. We reveal how you can earn up to $700 a week. And Pakistan thrown into darkness for hours in a massive nationwide blackout. But first, Joshua Daw is here with sport. Josh, Justin Langer, he's weighed in on those racism allegations. He has. Good evening, Michael. Some strong words from the Australian coach. We'll hear from him next as the Green Machine launches the Aussies to Towards a series victory. A superhero effort steals the spotlight on Brady's record day and the 6th Division battlers on song in the FA Cup. Australia needs just eight wickets to reclaim the Border Gavaskar Trophy after Cameron Green helped set the tourists a mammoth target of 407. At stumps on day four, India a two for 98, trailing by 309 runs. Green bringing up his maiden test half century with some power hitting. With the series in the balance, India could ill afford to let any opportunity slip. Oh, there was the chance. Their woes compounded by confirmation Jadeja's series is now over. Labashane was feeling a touch creative, only to gift his wicket on 73 as the debutante Saini struck a double blow. Wade goes for four, pressure will be on him. Their desperation to disturb the stumps, perhaps pushing the friendship. Well, what's that all about? Look at, and look, and look at the teapot. <laughs> look at Pistol, <laughs> Paul Rockwell. Smith put the foot down after lunch but missed out on back-to-back -back centuries and let his frustration show. Boomer's displeasure just as palpable. This was not a, a, that hard a catch. With a maiden 50 to his name, Green let loose, depositing a tiring bowling attack deep into the stands. Oh, thank you very much. Green's attack intensified, but he was brought undone on 84. The declaration followed, India set an unlikely 407 to win. It appeared they had row its measure, only to be overturned on review. Regardless, the opener was living dangerously and wasn't about to go into his shell. His partner unable to stick around. Oh, there it is, that's what they've wanted. And in the shadow of stumps, that aggression caught up with Rowett. Catch taken by Stark on the road. The Aussies with their tails up, heading into the final day. Brayden Ingram, Nine News.
And Justin Langer has condemned the alleged racial abuse held at India's players twice in the past 24 hours in Sydney. Play was delayed for more than 10 minutes on the cusp of tea before police evicted a number of fans with accusations India's Mohammed Siraj was racially abused. And the more you get educated and the more you understand, um, the more sickening it is when you hear of you know, racial discrimination um, as has been alleged today. Cricket Australia has launched an investigation along with New South Wales Police into yesterday's complaints. Scorchers coach Adam Voges has heaped praise on star quick Jai Richardson after another match-winning performance with the ball. Richardson now leads the BBL with 17 wickets, having snuffed out the thunder last night. Perth's dream of a fourth BBL crown is alive. The Scorchers firing in the furnace. Well, that's all it's going to take, wasn't it? Full fast and straight 140 k's at the pegs. Paceman Jai Richardson at his destructive best, claiming four wickets. Uh, outstanding again. Um, that ball field, uh, there's not much he can't do. I think he's got better with every game. Chasing 186, Thunder batsman Sam Billings tried to silence the home crowd. Bang! Oh, huge! Massive! Up in the stand. And but as the chase got tense, AJ Ty tightened up his bowling. Oh, he's bowled him! May have been a little chop on. Andrew Ty has got the big wicket. A fourth win in a row soured by injury to Colin Munro, sent for scans on a sore quad. We're certainly hopeful that it's nothing too serious. He was able to continue on in that and, um, again, played beautifully well. The Kiwi star has been an integral part of the Scorchers' revival, belting three consecutive 50s. The coach confident he'll be fine to face the Hurricanes on Tuesday. We got challenged with a two for 20 early and um, we could have easily fallen in a heat, but I thought the maturity shown by Colin Munro got another partnership going with Josh Inglis. Jimmy Williams, Nine News. Alex Demonor is ramping up his Australian Open preparations in Turkey. Australia's number one male is through to the quarterfinals after a straight sets win over Bulgarian Adrian Andreev. It comes as qualifying for Melbourne Park gets underway in Doha and Dubai. Those matches live on Nine Now. A year after achieving the same feat here in the NBL, LaMelo Ball has become the youngest player in NBA history to record a triple-double. The teenager capping off a dream night with a win as he enhances his Rookie of the Year aspirations. From dishing out dimes... LaMelo, eyes everywhere! ..to scoring through traffic... LaMelo, bully ball! LaMelo Ball can do it all. The 19-year-old finishing with 22 points, 12 rebounds and 11 assists against Atlanta, giving the Hornets their fifth win this season. LaMelo, got it! From a fresh rookie to one of sport's greatest veterans, Tom Brady scooping up another record. Brady fires from the end zone. It's a touchdown. The 43-year-old becoming the oldest player to throw a touchdown in the playoffs, but it was Washington Reserve quarterback Taylor Heineke stealing the spotlight. Keeps the play alive, runs for the first down, dives for the pylon. Is he in? Is he in? Oh, yes, touchdown, one run. What a play. Brady's Buccaneers holding on for an eight-point win, their first in the postseason since 2002, while Buffalo snapped their own 25-year playoff drought with victory over Indianapolis. Overnight wins for both Manchester United and Arsenal in the FA Cup. Emil Smith throw here for Arsenal, and finally someone scored. The big upset coming from six-tier side Chorley, stunning championship club Derby County 2-0 to earn their first ever fourth round berth. Celebrations capped off with an Adele-inspired team song. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. We've been saying that to ourselves a little bit around the office this week because, Michael, this is your last night presenting the news here in Perth before you head off to LA as the US correspondent. I know you hate this stuff, but yep. on behalf of all the team, we want to wish you all the best. We're going to miss your sense of humour and your professionalism. You've brought us plenty of great stories and been a great mentor to many journalists, myself included, but <laughs> uh, a very exciting step for you. Stay safe. We okay. look forward to seeing plenty of your face right across the Nine Network. Good on you, Josh. Thanks, I Michael. appreciate that. Talk to you shortly. <laughs> Next, turning trash into treasure. How a Perth man with a can-do attitude is making hundreds of dollars a week from your rubbish and why you could be paying a lot more for childcare.
Well, welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest headlines making news in Perth this evening. WA's hard border with Queensland could be sealed shut for 28 days, despite the state recording no cases of community spread of COVID-19. A Vietnamese man has been arrested at a backpackers accused of jumping off a ship docked at Albany and swimming to shore, sparking virus outbreak fears. The McGowan government has promised a $400 bonus to seniors to beef up their security if re-elected in March. And WA sailor John Sanders has finally made it home, completing his 11th circumnavigation of the world. The 81-year-old is waiting on a police clearance in Albany. A Perth ex-con has become the king of cans, spending each day collecting recycling and turning it into cash with a new container deposit scheme. And his profits are extraordinary. He's making enough to pay the bills as he cleans up the streets. In Logan's world, can is king. If you're prepared to get dirty, you're going to get paid. Underneath this rugged exterior is an ex-con who's found a passion for trawling trash and turning it into treasure. This is funding my lifestyle, for sure. I don't have an extravagant lifestyle, lucky for that, and this, but this can fund it. Everything I buy is for cans. I bought the bike, I bought the car, um, I pay for my licence. And he says anyone can do work to turn litter into cash. He's ending each week with some impressive paychecks too. One week totalling $538, only to be bettered the very next with $758. It's probably not the most attractive, and I'm not going to have a model girlfriend anytime soon from it. <sighs> and I'm not going to be driving a Corvette, but a Corvette wouldn't suit my lifestyle at the moment. No terrain is off limits, from walking trails to skate parks cleaning the streets with his trusty bike and claw. The 45-year-old ends each day at the Fremantle Recycling Centre to collect his reward. The Containers for Change scheme has taken off since October. The very first weekend of the new year, more than 40,000 cans and bottles were deposited at the site. All of a sudden, litter had value and there was real motivation for people like Logan who are willing to get out there, pick up the litter, but then get rewarded for it, as they should. No can is left behind on Logan's morning routine. He's up at 5am every day hunting and gathering and says at a bare minimum you can make $50 a day. That's 500 cans and bottles. This is a treasure hunt for me. I hunt this shit. I love it and I love it. It's not, it's not, it's not hard to get up at 5 o'clock when I know I'm going to get paid. A man with a can-do attitude who's crushing his new job. Cameron Gok, Nine News. Well, the cost of childcare is projected to rise by more than 4% per year for the next four years, far outstripping inflation. Labor predicts the savings parents were making on the new system will be wiped out within a year. We know that CPI is pegged to the childcare subsidy, which means this increase in childcare fees are going to leave families worse off. And a government spokesperson says most families using childcare were able to receive subsidies for between 50 and 85% of fees. Pakistan has been plunged into darkness overnight, with most of the country losing power in one of the biggest blackouts in the nation's history. Electricity is slowly being restored in phases, but the government says it still doesn't know the exact cause of the breakdown. A three-day lockdown in Brisbane may have confined people to their homes, but one DJ has found a way to put a positive spin on the situation. Caught on camera last night, blasting music across his apartment building in a bid to boost the mood. Residents flashed phones to the rhythm as song requests were made via social media. Sherry Lee Biggs is back with your weather. Sherry, no sign of 40 degree days. Well, we're safe for now, Michael, but don't expect mild summer days. We're heading into the high 30s soon. I'll have your forecast details coming up next. Welcome back. Well, it's been nicer to have some mild weather for a bit. It won't last long, though, moving into the 30s again from tomorrow with a scorching end to the week on the cards. Now, we reached a top of 27 degrees at 12.30 this afternoon, and right now it's still lingering just under 23 degrees. Looking to the map, and the reason behind this cool change is a trough which pushed further inland today, allowing some cooler onshore breeze. Now, that trough will reform down the west coast tomorrow as temperatures rise. There is also a lot of heat building 
happening in the north of WA at the moment and a second trough is going to drag that across the country and down into the southeast. So looking hot in Melbourne as well this week. 37 and sunny tomorrow. Much of the same for Adelaide. Even Hobart heating up with a late shower or two and 36 degrees. Heading back home to the north of WA now and we'll see the mercury soar this week. 45 degrees in Marble Bar and with a strong afternoon sea breeze there is a severe fire danger warning for the Gascoigne and Exmouth Gulf Coasts but it is looking cloudy across the south. That will clear through the day in the southwest as it starts to warm up. 29 degrees in Yelling Up and a little cooler further south. 20 degrees in Albany. To coastal conditions now, not the day for boating. Seas are high again, peaking at three metres. A bit of a gusty southeasterly wind in the morning to 30 knots, and that will turn to a strong sea breeze in the afternoon. So expect it to be a bit blustery and cooler along our coastal suburbs. 30 the top in Swanbourne and Scarborough. Over in the hills, Kalamunda looking at a top of 33. Now, what might be refreshing is a bit of a cooler start to the day. It's down to 15 degrees in the city, followed by a top of 32 mid afternoon. And and if we take a look ahead at the week, remaining blustery throughout most of it. 33 on Tuesday, uh, 34 degrees, a string of them to get us to the weekend and a scorching Sunday on the cards with a top of 37 degrees. Now, Michael, because I know you hate gushy goodbyes just as much, we are going to give you one more. <laughs> I just want to say good luck over in the States. We're so proud of you and you are going to be very missed here in the Nine Newsroom. Thank you very much, Jerry. I'll be back in 18 months. Oh, well, I look forward to it. <laughs> Looking forward to it already. Good on your shares. Thanks, mate. That is Nine News this Sunday. Thank you for your company. 60 Minutes is next. Enjoy your evening. Good night.